Argentina is a country of immigrants. Most of the immigrants came from Europe, especially from Italy and Spain, and the great waves of immigration, just like in the United States, occurred at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. The music that this country inherited was mostly of European origin because the immigrants brought their native music with them, both the classical music and the music of the uh, popular tunes of the Italians and Spanish. And then there were waves of immigrants from many other countries uh, of Europe and lately also from Asia. Um, they also have, earlier on in their history, the slave trade, so there was also the influence of the dances of the Africans. Uh, around the turn of the century, of this, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, there was a movement among Argentine composers toward nationalistic traits. And uh, I would like to focus this program on those influences. First of all, there is the um, folklore of the city, which is the tango and the folklore of the countryside, mainly of the Pampas. Um, there were a number of composers who used these uh, themes and created their own also with the spirit of the folkloric music. And they mixed it with the music that they knew from their training and from what they heard when they were growing up and studying in Argentina. Um, the tango, which was born in the port city of Buenos Aires, had very humble origins. It was influenced by the Habanera, by the Candombe, which is uh, the African, one of the African dances, and also by the Fandango. It's a dance that evolved through several generations, and at the beginning it was only in the very low places, in the bordelos of the port city, that uh, it was played. And uh, was mainly an improvisation by trios of musicians. They played on the flute, the violin, and guitar. And um, for quite a while, first men uh, danced among themselves while they were waiting. And then later on, it became, became a dance of woman and man. It's a very sensuous dance. It has moments of lyricism. And also, it has a very sharp rhythm. These um, dances were absorbed by many musicians who improvised. And later on, there was the introduction of the bandoneon, which in uh, it's very much an, an instrument like uh, the accordion, but without the keys. It has buttons on both sides. This uh, was a German invention, and uh, in the 1930s especially, it gave the orchestra typica, or tango orchestra, its character. This transformed the music, which was quite light, and uh, in, into a dance that was heavily uh, accented. And the composer of the first five tangos used on the piano the um, idea of the orchestra typica, of the orchestra that had the bandoneon in it, that had a very sharp accentuation. The first tangos didn't have lyrics. Uh, in the 1900s, 1920s, there were composers who started writing lyrics about the nostalgia of the immigrants for their lost Europe. It be became uh, like a, a paradise because they were far away. They were never going to uh, go back. So that is a very nostalgic uh, and many times pessimistic view of life because they had a hard time uh, adapting to the new country and especially uh, the, the economy wasn't that great at that point. Then in the 1920s, a very famous tango singer, Carlos Gardel, brought the tango to Paris. 
And at that point was such a craze in France that it became internationally known. And when Gardel came back to Argentina, by then it was accepted by the high society. Everybody danced the tango. It was not only the dance of the, uh, the low people of, of the port part of the city. Um, then after that, the tango went through more evolution the, in the 1940s. They were singing of a mythical uh, Buenos Aires, the Buenos Aires of the past, of the beginning of the century. And uh, so it always has this a characteristic of nostalgia. Um, Juan Jose Castro was a brother of other two famous musicians. Um, they all uh, were born in Buenos Aires, and uh, Juan Jose Castro made many tours as a conductor. Uh, he conducted in Australia, in Puerto Rico, in, in Europe, but most of his works were composed and premiered in Argentina. He became quite well known for an uh, international prize that he won when one of his operas was premiered at the Teatro La Scala in Milan. This composer wrote tangos in 1942. And I'm going to play now these compositions. <laughs> 